Today I'm working on this 2015 Chrysler 300. It was brought to me by a, another shop. Their complaint was that there was throwing some error message on the somewhere on the dash or screen about I think a shifter issue. I didn't exactly get what they were trying to explain, but I figured I would just take it, scan it, see what it's doing, what it's calling for, and kind of try to decipher that on my own. So basically what I did was take it in, I scanned it all, complete system scan, and looked for something that was active as far as trouble codes. And so there was a bunch of low battery voltage codes which they did tell me they replaced the battery. Actually they said that after they did that supposedly this started happening. So with that, the car completely has a bunch of low voltage codes, but there is one trouble code that is active and it's in the transmission control unit. It is calling for a code that it, it says it does not see the electric shifter. The shifter system on this, it's just purely electrical, no direct connection to the transmission. You request a gear like most modern vehicles are now, and then from there it's a bus signal to the uh, actual transmission, which then the transmission will do its job changing gears. And obviously I've started looking at it already, but decided to pick up the camera and bring you guys along in case this is something that I can present as helping you guys out there. Apparently it's very common for the electric shifter on these vehicles to go bad. It's very easy to shoot from the hip, make a call without doing basically much testing, and hope that you're right. Okay, so again, I've already started diagnosing and looking at it, but off camera beforehand, um, there was a bunch of codes. I cleared everything, and the transmission, again, had the currently present fault for the electronic shifter. Initially, I don't think this came up. But what basically what I did after I cleared everything, I removed this, unplugged it, checked it for apparently if any type of drinks or anything spill uh, onto this unit, it'll damage it. So I was just doing visual inspection, plugged it back in and rechecked it with the scanner and this now came up. The weird thing is this vehicle drove here. I pulled it in. I was able to rotate, grab gears, and pull it into the shop. If this completely fails, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure maybe it won't be able to, um, you know, go into drive or reverse or any of that. So that's one thing that's a little weird for me based on the trouble code in the transmission control unit which basically I'll show you that now so a U code it's active lost calm with electronic shift module on that bus that they're calling so this is electronic shift module no other module had that trouble code and now if we look at this guy, the electronic shift module, that's actually talking. It has a U-code, it's active, and it's saying lost communication with the transmission. So they're both saying they can't see each other, but they can both talk and communicate. Okay, so I pulled up the wiring diagram for the system the um, shifter and transmission and my apologies it's hard to see but this guy here is the they're calling it shift by wire basically the uh, electronic shifter module and this down here is the transmission uh, module which is down at the tranny it's actually in the um, 
inside on the valve body, basically a mechatronics unit. Looks to be a ZF style trans. Nonetheless, the way that the system's made up, this guy is on a bus system here, and this transmission module is on this bus system here. And so that's the bus that we are communicating to both modules. And I don't know 100% if it's the same bus I'd have to look. But we are getting communication to this guy, the shifter, through this bus. And transmission through this bus with the scanner. So that means that this one's alive, power and ground. This one's alive, power and ground. At least one of the buses per module is operational and good. And there's a second bus on both modules that ties the two together. That's this bus here, two wire bus. That's the one in the trouble code that they describe. My thoughts and my job right now is to verify this bus uh, integrity, the two wires, because that to me is the only thing tying the two that would make sense if it's broke for this guy to be able to talk and tattletale that it can't see him and this guy to do the same talk on this bus saying it can't see this guy through this bus. So this is our common factor here. This is what I decided to start checking. I will unplug this connector here at the electronic shift module. And I am going to go to this junction connector. And I'm going to check from here on back first. If that's good, then I'll check here to the tranny. So this is that junction connector. From here, it'll go down to the transmission uh, on this side. This is the body side into the interior. So I'm going to tap from here over to the shifter. Which I'll get a shot of that now. Obviously, you can hear the meter. Let me get a better shot. Okay. So that's one. So I'll swap over to the other guy. Okay, so from here to out there, the wire is intact. I know we're not load testing or anything, but right now I'm quickly just verifying the lines and then now I'm going to check from there down to the transmission. Okay, there's our transmission connector unplugged and then oh, oh that's the wrong one I'll go to the next one over that's one good one and what I'll do is I'll move it over to the next one so then when I go up top I'm already connected there okay we'll go swap over And it's simply just moving over to the next one. All right. Continuity. We know our connections from basically all the way inside down to the transmission are good. 
But actually, as I say that, let's check the whole circuit now with that junction connected. We'll, since we're still down at the tranny, we'll go from the tranny all the way inside just to double check. Okay, plugged in. I'll swap over the leads. The ends, actually. And let's check the whole circuit for continuity. Yes, again, I know we're not loading it with a light bulb. But this is what I'm doing for right now. And just, I mean, as a side note, it's not a high amperage deal to begin with. But uh, this is just what we're doing for now. Okay. So we've got one there. We'll check the next one. Okay. We'll move this guy there and we'll check up top all right we're back up top let's check the other wire all right hopefully you can hear that but that completes both bus lines from top to bottom. And one last thing I want to try, just to see, because we've been messing around, is plug everything back in, clear everything, and rescan it. Okay, we're plugged in up top, we're plugged in down to bottom. Let's key it up. Let's try to clear those faults. Well, looks like it's still going to be there. Okay, one thing. If you notice, the electronic shift module fault cleared. The transmission control module did not and assume same code. So for some reason the the transmission is not seeing this guy. Now just to show you let me okay so we can move that's that's what's weird is we have vehicle movement transmission grabs gears and moves yet it's claiming it can't see the shifter which then would be it would not know what requested gear you're wanting let's see Obviously still active. Let's try to clear it from here. Yes. Okay. Um, before I cycle the key, let's see. Okay, it won't matter. It's it's a hard fault that won't leave the transmission. So at this point, there's not much more that I can do or test. Um, I think the simplest thing is to still, just like before, possibly make a call on the shifter. It's It's a weird one, a hard one, because the shifter is alive and communicating. 
it actually can now see the transmission but for some reason transmission cannot see the shifter so um, out of the two obviously the shifter is the easier one to swap out and, and check uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do a transmission just to check this problem I believe it's something in the shifter and it's easy enough to pop one in and then we can check to see if the code clears. Okay, so at this point, because obviously you saw that being the parse changer and throwing the shifter on there. Made no difference. I am going to scope the that dedicated bus between the two uh, modules, the shifter and the tranny, and see what I'm, I'm getting. Uh, if it drops out or anything when the message pops up. And... The thing about it is I have no idea what I'm looking for on that bus, so I just want to see what it looks like. So I am connected down there with the scope, but one step further, I went and borrowed one of these same exact year system and everything, and I'm going to take the same capture of those signals from a known good and compare it with this one here. Okay, so I've got it tapped in key is not on right away both you can tell are close to the 12 i don't know if this is kind of like a lin where it's a, a source voltage type of bus or it's a like a actual can which is a two and a half idle and then uh one volt up down so i'm gonna key it up and we'll see what it produces Key on. Okay, so first thing to note, both shifters produce the same um, capture, it looks like. And we'll just zoom in this way. And that's uh that's a weird looking bus. There's different voltages you could see here and here for each channel. So um let's see, let's bring down the red so it definitely doesn't look like any type of normal bus that I'm used to seeing and even the voltage range not something I've seen so let's take uh, let's go to this point so right here looks like it's 11 so basically we'll get you the numbers there so that's the blue channel so it drops almost the whole amount but it starts or I'll call that idle up there point at around 11 and a half. Now let's look at the red. We'll touch on the quote unquote idle point and see what the drop is. We'll kind of go there. And so that that one's different for sure in the uh, the drop point uh, voltage. Looks to be idling, quote unquote, in that same area, about 11 and a half, but the, the drop is different than on the blue. Just off the bat, again, not knowing what I'm supposed to get or what voltage bus levels this one's supposed to be, but 
even then without knowing anything, this doesn't look to be correct. It's not like a mirror. It's not a bus that seems to be mirroring itself. Voltage ranges are not the same between the two. So I bet that there's something going on here. So now we'll go ahead and do the same to that guy and see what the levels are. Okay, so I'm still on that same page, but I am now in the uh, new car. And just a thing to note, I am grounding at the battery. Um, that way there's no questions of that. And again, I will just key it on, but let me get this started. Let me zoom out. And <laughs> look at that right off the bat. And I'm just going to key it on. As, you, as we can tell, it's already different. This is probably something more what was expecting to see and also what used to seeing with bus so let's see okay so yep this is definitely more of what I was expecting to see you see the high the low they mirror each other let's check voltage levels um, so this this clearly explains what's going on okay so that's at two and a half and then probably don't even need to, but just out of curiosity. So this is going to act more of a actual cam bus type style. So there you go. Voltage ranges. Um, okay. We've got now a better starting point for that guy being faulted there seems to be some sort of um the dedicated bus they refer to that as the dedicated bus powertrain bus there seems to be something wrong with that between the two modules from the shifter down to the tranny so one other thing i wanted to do was i'm um, tapped into the can there at the transmission connector so I want to simultaneously scope the bus down here and up top. And I want to see if there's a difference or if it's the same. Um, my guess is that it's going to be the same. That looks like it's a corrupted type of issue on the bus. But being that I'm already going to eat one part, I want to just go the extra step and verify same corrupted bus down here simultaneously as up top okay i've got the two going in the two down low i've not woke the vehicle up it looks like all signals are already up top i'll just open the door that should be enough to get some communication or attempt of communication going um but again well but again, looks like we are dealing with corrupted from top to bottom. And we'll split these quickly. So, yeah, it does seem to be fully corrupted. I don't even need to zoom in. So, from again, from top to bottom, same signal. Now, there's one thing I'm set up to do that I want to try. Lastly, and just to see... Uh, I'm going to crawl under there, unplug the uh, transmission and see what that looks like, but let me key it on. And let me get under there. So it's unplugged. You guys can see before me, but 
Looks like uh, not much of a difference. Let's see. Yeah, so. So it's still the same way. Let's go here. So. Not sure if that was the point of unplugging. But. Let's, at the same time, let me unplug the shifter. Now, if you remember, you saw me or heard me unplug the shifter while the transmission is unplugged. This is that section. Look at what we have. The We have one bus. I'll have to check which one's which, but... One of them is up at 12, pretty much source voltage, and the other one is down to ground. Now this is with both those modules unplugged. As far as we know, according to the diagram, this is a direct line between the two, and with both unplugged, how can there be something on there? there, there I would believe that there shouldn't be anything on there. So I decided to quickly run a complete system scan to see what just what's going on. So naturally in the engine computer, we've got one for not seeing the transmission, a message missing from transmission, ABS. So same thing for transmission, cluster, same thing, transmission, the body, same thing, transmission. Radio, same thing, transmission. HVAC, uh, not related. Radio frequency hub, transmission, and it's the only guy reporting about the uh, shifter also not plugged in and missing. That right there is very odd because both of them are on the can C and have their own dedicated bus. But with them unplugged from can C, all these other modules should also see that that guy's also unplugged. But they're only reporting the transmission module being unplugged. Okay, so I decided to go one step further. And I've actually cut the bus harness. And... I've made my own leads from the connector and I'm monitoring there with the scope here up top to the same um, same lines that I was on. So these two yellow leads are basically our new can lines and you saw the shifter unplugged and then the, that connector is unplugged with our new can lines. Key is actually on you can tell and look at where our voltages are for both can lines now I'm only monitoring on let's see the first two channels so A and B but nonetheless all channels are at zero now the next thing to do is to plug those modules in and see what we get. Do one at a time. I'm gonna do a transmission one first. Key is still on. Okay, I'm plugged in. And we got some activity. Uh, it's definitely not up close to 12 volt. Let's go ahead and plug in the shifter. I'm plugged in. Cycle the key. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to scan the whole car again. Okay, let's look at the report. 
So Storn, 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 Storn. Actually, that's the uh, transmission. And let's see, which one were we always fighting? <laughs> this code here. That's listed as Storn. That's the one that would never go away. So let's see. Storn, Storn, Storn. Active, which is the HVAC. We know that. The radio frequency, so storage, storm, and the shifter, storage, storm. Let's go ahead and clear all of these. And um, this is definitely a good looking uh, sign. Okay, it's done. Oddly enough, it looks like the Shifter has two trouble codes. Ah, oh, okay. Look. Uh, we've been dropping our voltage. I haven't had a charger on it. So, uh, let me get a charger on it and um, continue on. Okay, so while that's charging, I'm trying to think of a, another test step that I can do or continue on this plan of attack and so what I am going to attempt to do is so I'm going to go ahead and put this back together temporarily I'm going to tie those back together in the same there I'm going to have my scope leads here and here just like before and since I do have access to this junction connector here for the time being which is this guy I am going to while monitoring so i want basically i want the 10 volts or whatever to come back and then while monitoring both ends i'm going to split that bus right there and i want to see if the 10 volts stays up here or here my guess it's going to be up at this point but we'll see okay so quickly what i've done I've joined the CAN bus back together temporarily up here. I tapped into monitoring the bus again. And I have done nothing underneath. And this was with the shifter unplugged. The voltage was already, excuse me, was already raised up to about 4 volts. And that's with everything connected from the shifter on down to the unplugged transmission connector there's voltage already on that one bus line and then this was when I plugged in the uh, shifter up top and also somewhere in this point I did unplug that junction which made no difference and then, um, since it made no difference on the elevated voltage, that's why I wanted to just plug that in. And it made it all wacky, let's call it. So, so right now, based off of this, we've got basically this unplugged. We've got this joined up to this point where that junction's unplugged. So transmission's unplugged. Junction's unplugged. Here on back, it's intact. And we've got elevated voltage somewhere there. Next thing is to try to find this junction and unplug that. Okay, so after clearly seeing that there was voltage basically on that line, I decided to try to figure out where it was from so I can eliminate that instead of basically running an overlay harness, which obviously we know would work but just my curiosity being that there was external voltage high voltage not like high high but higher than the two and a half bus voltage introduced on that line i wanted to see if i could find it my next natural step after disconnecting that junction was to find attempt to find the junction underneath and go from there but I've got this car 
all torn apart under here. Every single junction connector from the from following the bulkhead harness and it actually goes over to BCM um, this one I did unplug this one that didn't make any difference I unplugged all the BCM stuff nothing dropped basically I was watching for that voltage to drop up here on the meter as I'm tapped into that line out there I've even went as far as trying to look at this harness here I didn't want to go into removing the seat, so next and last step, I decided to lift the center console to start chasing the wire, see where it would go, if it would go up this way, or if it would go up this way, and try to follow it and find that junction, which, again, I, I've been under that glove box for hours now and, and not have any luck. So basically, of course, off camera, I believe I got it fixed. So I was this so this harness goes up there to the shifter, this small one here. And then there's this junction here, which I'm not sure if this is the junction they were referring to, but it's the only one that I'm finding because again, it is nothing related to under there. <clears throat> but um, I had my meter, which is right now it's at zero volts, and I'll get you a shot of that again. So I'm tapped into the bus line that would have voltage on it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my longer lead to bring the meter inside and, and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's the meter, I ran to that connector, that junction, the lead, I'm just grounding it here, and take a look at the meter, so, if I mess with the connector, the voltages kind of bounces I can't seem to get the 12 volts or the uh, higher volts not 12 but so there I'm steady I'll start moving and so when I unplug this it went from it was I think 9 10 volts I think the battery's getting a little weak again and as soon as i unplug this boom that dropped down to zero and of course now that i when i plugged it back in nothing I, well i can't get that that basically high voltage back on so let me see <clears throat> So, and basically, this connector is covered in basically Coca-Cola sugar or something that they spilled down in the, uh, you can see residue, something. Basically, it looks like they spilled the drink, some soda, or whatever, and, let's see, yeah, I mean, there's, oh, it's hard to tell, but there, look inside, there's all that brown Coca-Cola sugar or coffee, um, in there and you can tell some there on the left also there's corrosion and over to the right there's a dark spot towards the bottom on that pin it's hard to tell so basically overall 
it looks like the whole time the problem was from the spilt drink having corroded and basically it looks like um, shorting out or time pins together through its goo and introducing higher voltage on that dedicated bus line. So for now, I get to put all that back together, junction one under the hood, back together, and what I am going to do is clean that connector real good, get all that corrosion, all the sticky stuff out of it, uh, go through the pins, make sure all that is good in the connector, put that back together, assemble the car, and double check it, but seeing that on that meter that voltage dropped, again, it was off camera, just like like always, but once I got rolling, I was rolling it in it, and I wanted to get to to an answer so um but the best thing that I can do is after putting all that back together, I'll show you guys make sure that that trouble code goes away, just like how we saw when we made our own line down to the transmission in at least in this way or form, I won't have to do an overlay. And we know that we have taken away that high voltage off of that bus line also. So I'll go ahead and put this together and get you a shot of that. Okay, so it's up and running. I got that power feed taped up and secured. Uh, let's see, this is the bus signals. So there's one. And there's the other. So everything's communicating, voltage is correct. Shifter's powered up, and I just did a complete scan, and there's the transmission. Everything's stored. Uh, there's a ton of faults I created when unplugging all those under dash connectors. But here is the shifter, again, stored. So everything is working good and proper. I'll finish putting it back together and that should be it. <laughs>